every person that wants to connect himself to the Creator must understand that he needs to go through a unique journey that no one ever walked and went in that path before. It's a unique way, an individual way that's been planned and designed, prepared, calculated by the Creator just for you. And every person, every individual must understand that if he will try always to go and to find the right answers and the truth, answer to all of his questions by consulting with others and going and hearing and learning from other people, that way will never gonna succeed. He will never find his true happiness. A person must find his own unique way while serving the Creator. You cannot count on me that I'll pray for you. You cannot count on that genius that he will learn from, for you. You cannot count on that amazing couple that they will have peace in their houses instead of you sitting for hours and hours talking with your soulmate, solving all of your issues, trying to come to the right solutions, to find the right advice. No one can replace you, even the teacher of your children's school, he will never going to be the father or the mother of your children. He won't be able to do that, to replace you. He won't be able. It will never going to happen and it's not meant to be. You must be who that you are and you must serve Hashem, the creator of the universe, by being who that you are. I experienced a very, very strong feeling of fear in one of my Hidbodiduyot, in one of my individual prayers. And I remember that fear, it was like panic attack, like crazy anxiety. Why? Because I was very, very brave to look deep inside and suddenly I felt like, oh no, 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 you don't want to see that. <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't even, I, I, I don't know what was there. To tell you the truth, I haven't finished my investigation yet on telling you from what I'm so scared inside. But that feeling rejected me like a tsunami wave. It was so powerful, so strong that it just kicked me out of that conversation, from that observation, from that meditation, from that prayer. That inner fear that I experienced inside of me was so powerful that it was worse than the worst enemy that I ever seen and, and, and stood in front in my life. For no person I'll be afraid as from that inner feeling of not wanting to deal with that what that I must deal with. So. Maybe that's the, now I'm thinking that a few days ago, I'm always in my speeches, I'm always telling that you should not be afraid and that you should be bold and brave and to fight and to achieve and to be strong, always. But in the back of my head, I always have a question. It's written, Ashre Adam Pochet Tamid. We're praising that person that he is afraid always. And I'm telling you, don't be afraid. So, how can it be? There is a side that we're praising that person that is afraid. We don't want you to be afraid, but the verse is saying that you're, uh, that you're amazing if you're afraid all of the time. So, which is that fear? And we're not talking about fear from heaven. Pachad, it's written. Pachad, it's, it's to be afraid. It's not yirah. It's not fear from heaven. It's not faith in Hashem. It's not to be afraid of Hashem. From Hashem you don't need to be afraid. Hashem you should love, Hashem you should, you should hug, you should kiss Him, you should, you should be in, in, in good relationship with Hashem. Hashem is good. 
Yes, it's true. Many people educated us in very crooked and bent ways to be afraid of Hashem, but they were wrong. So we don't need to follow their fears, being afraid of Hashem. You don't need to be afraid of Hashem. So what do you need to be afraid of? So maybe now, while I'm standing here with you, Hashem helped me to understand. The Zara Kadosh is saying, I'll expand my speech a little bit. The Zara Kadosh is saying, the holy book that's been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his friends, is saying that, is asking a question. Who is the one that wins the war, that conquered the fight, the battle against the evil inclination. Who is that person? So the Zohar Kadosh is answering, it's that one that holds the weapon in his hand. Great. Now the Zohar Kadosh is asking another question. How come you say that the winner is a person that still holds his weapon? If he holds his weapon, means that he still needs to fight. He's got enemies. So if he's got enemies, so he didn't won, how can you say that he won the war, that he beated his enemies, he can put down the weapon. If he killed all of his enemies, now he can put the sword. That's it. No more war, right? The Zohar Kadosh is answering us, the war never finish. <laughs> and if you hold your weapon in your hand, it means that you're winning. <laughs> so keep on fighting <laughs> till the end, right? So maybe this is the answer to my such deep question. Who is that person that we're praising him on being afraid? When I did my individual prayer, my Hidbodedut, my meditation, and I looked deep inside, myself, to my inside, a huge fear came from inside, a wave like the most terrifying darkness ever. I couldn't even look. I was so terrified. I just, I wanted to go home, but I don't have a home, so I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't have nowhere to go. <laughs> so, but at least it stopped my, my Hidbodedut, my prayer. I've been rejected from my prayer by experiencing that terrifying fear. But what was that fear? That's an answer that I cannot give you. But I might give you the answer to that question that I asked. Who is that person that we're praising him on the fact that he is afraid? And like we said, the Zohar Kadosh is helping us to understand that the war never finished. You must keep on fighting. So who is that person that is afraid? Is that person that is keep on fighting. Keep on looking deep into his soul, into his inside. And keep on fighting with all of those fears and the stress, the anxieties, all of those horrible feelings, the bad emotions, the sorrow, the memories, the disappointments, all of those things that we don't want to experience anymore. But that warrior is that person that is not putting down his weapon. He's not backing up. He's never giving up. He is ready to fight and to deal with his fears. And for that we're praising him on being afraid. That he's not afraid to be afraid. That he's brave enough to deal with his fears. To keep on looking deep inside, even if that feeling is not pleasant at all. Even if he finds his foundation, the foundation of his faith, shaky and not stable. And he doesn't have answers to all of his questions. And people that are asking him questions are making him doubt his own faith. And he's keep on going back again and again to battle and to fight and not to give up. Because after that we learned 
that there is no despair in the world at all. It means that if we just going to keep on fighting, we're going to win. And the victory is to keep on fighting, like the Dezor Kadosh said. If you're holding the weapon in your hand, it means that you're winning. To win the war, it's to keep on fighting. Which war? What are those weapons that we need to hold? Guns, roses, what we're supposed to hold? Our ancestors told us what is the strongest weapon that we received from heaven. It's the power of prayer. It's to express your fears in front of the Almighty. It's to tell Him your heart. It's to speak from the bottom of your heart, to scream the pain of your soul. It's to share from the bottom of your heart all of your holy desires. And to ask for mercy for yourself and for all of your beloved ones. To every person that you know. To ask for, for complete forgiveness. To us all. Complete redemption. How can I go to sleep calmly and quietly? If I know that you're homeless. If I know that you're poor. How can I eat my supper? If I know that you haven't ate yours. How can I send my children to school? If I don't know if your children are educated. And the Creator is waking you up. That you won't have a place to sleep. And that you won't eat supper. And that your children will be out of school. That you're going to wake up to pray for the rest of your people. For the rest of the nations. Not only, only our nation. Every person needs mercy. And you have to find that mercy inside of yourself. That's your true self. A loving person. A kind person. A supportive person. An honorable person is a person that honors others. It's in your power to bring redemption. To bring salvation to people. To the wide world. With which tools? I don't have money, I don't have knowledge, I don't have a house, I don't have a car, I don't have that talent, I don't have that ability. You got the weapon that you received from heaven by the holy righteous people. Those are our ancestors and the rest of the righteous people that came down from heaven to remind us in every generation and even in this dark last generation. The real righteous ones are those ones that will wake you up to find your true self. And not to lose yourself in the sea of exile, in the darkness of this generation, with social media and television and sports and athletes and supermodels and everyone are making their albums and singers and on television on prime time and everyone is a superstar. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose who that Hashem made you to be. Don't ever give up on your dreams. Don't ever back off from your goal that you set for yourself. That you know that the Creator sent you to this world with this holy desire. Don't let yourself give up until you're going to accomplish that. Until you're going to conquer the war. Don't stop fighting. Till the end, never back off from being who that you are. Be loyal to yourself. Be honest to yourself. Don't betray yourself. Don't cheat on yourself, on your true self, on the voice of truth that is screaming from inside. Unlock me. Set me free. Let me be who that I am. Don't let that inner voice to be shut down. Express the voice of your soul. Let the light of your unique soul, soul shine. Don't buy the opinions and criticism. And false faith of other people. 
their despair and their sadness, their frustrations. Don't buy that. Be who that you are. Be unique. Be an individual. Be yourself. You don't need no one by your side. The redemption will come by the merit of one person. He will be Mashiach Tzidkenu, the real true Messiah. He will come. Who he will be? Can you describe him? If he will be tall or if he will be short, if he will be blonde or if he will be dark hair. Do you know how to describe him? From which community? From which sex section? If you will be poor or wealthy? If you will be wise or simple, naive? Who will he be? Will he have the power of speech? He will be able to talk. Maybe he will be too humble. Won't be able to express himself. Do you know? You don't know. No one knows. But his prayers will be answered. Why? Because he will call the Creator from the bottom of his heart. He will have a heart and he will cry to Hashem. He will call the Creator from the bottom of his heart and his prayers will accept it in heaven in a complete way that never happened before. Completion like that never took place in the creation before. That's the real Messiah. The real Mashiach that will come will have the ability to speak to his father like an only child. And if you want to follow the true Mashiach, so follow your heart. Because the point of Mashiach is inside your heart. The voice of the Creator is speaking to us from our souls. Not from the books, not from the bookcases, not from the mouths of other people, from your inside. And if there are people that cannot believe in you, it's not a good enough reason that you won't believe in yourself. They cannot believe in you because they failed believing in themselves. So they gave up. And they said, okay, I won't make it. I can't do it. This world is too dark. People are too mean. I have too many enemies, too many difficulties, too many obstacles. Those are people with no faith. You cannot learn faith from people with no. You must learn faith from the believers. And if you can't find them, im ta'aminu ta'amenu. If you're going to believe in yourself, you're going to be believed. People will believe in you. People will follow you. I'm not an educated person. I learned 10 years in school. I quit in the middle of high school, didn't got the diploma of high school, never went to college, never went to university. Today, there are more than 150,000 people that are watching my videos online. How come? How come? Because I'm screaming from my heart and when they're listening to me it gives them the strength to scream their own scream i'm just fighting to be who that i am and not to back off from my dream and from my goals i'm not backing off i'm driving with all of my family you can all go and see them outside waiting for me in the van from one city to the other from one state to the next, touring in the U.S., even though that we live in Israel, in the Holy Land of Israel, and we are here, walking and serving the Creator, doing the best that we can to follow our own dream, to bring complete redemption, 
to wake up those souls that everyone else gave up on them. We're not giving up on no one. We're screaming in every synagogue, in every house, in every corner, in every street, in every forest that there will be no one left behind. No one left behind. When the complete redemption will come to the world, and it's coming, but when the Creator will finally reveal His face to us, you will see that He, as a merciful Father, will not going to give up on no one. Everyone will be redeemed. Everyone will redeem. But who will feel the shame? Who will be punished? Those ones that gave up on us. Those ones that were too important to care about you, to care about you, to care about you, to care about me, they will be humiliated in Judgment Day. Those ones that could not recognize the beauty of our souls, of those broken vessels of the Creator, of those wounded, broken souls of warriors, of soldiers that dedicated their lives for the truth. When a soldier comes back home after the war, he doesn't look like a hero. He's skinny and wounded and broken. He's not clean and he's not calm and he's not relaxed. He's not wealthy and his hair is not right and he doesn't smell so good. But he's a hero. Who will recognize those heroes that's the question. Who will recognize those warriors that by their merit we are alive? Those ones that are fighting evil. Those that are running into the territory of the enemies to the other side and rescuing souls one after the other, bringing them back home. Who will recognize those heroes those will be the ones that will be redeemed. How are you going to recognize them if you're going to have the gratitude to your saviors, to those ones that helped you, if you'll appreciate them, if you will love them, if you will cherish every moment by their sides, if you'll have that gratitude, you will enjoy the privilege and the merit of sharing eternity with those holy souls. I bless you all to enjoy that light of eternity in this world and in the world to come. May Hashem reveal His loving kindness on all of us and we will all receive a munashlema, complete faith. Amen. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all He. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.